Hey, Suncoast MCC. It's wonderful to see so many of you here today and people, some of whom I have not seen in a, almost a year or at least six or eight months. And so welcome home in person. And those of you who are online and watching, I know they're gonna pan the camera a little and you're gonna see faces and people you haven't seen in a long time. We're so happy if you're visiting with us for the first time or you're a, a long timer. We're so glad. Yes, but in the back here, we have at least one person who's visiting for the first time or two. We're so glad you're here today. And if you're joining us online, we're so proud to be a church that practices and preaches truth, trust, and transformation. So today we're going to honor deacons who are retiring and we're gonna have a Palm Sunday processional. So that's a wonderful thing and uh, in this beautiful setting. And so now Sam is gonna come and share with us the ways we can stay connected to Suncoast MCC during the week, especially this upcoming Holy Week. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to outdoor worship at, at Suncoast MCC. Here are ways you can stay connected and involved in Suncoast. Yesterday, we enjoyed re hearing the entire Gospel of Mark as we prepared our hearts for Holy Week and Easter. Thank you to all who were able to attend and take part in this message of Easter. The trivia crown is up for grabs. All right. <laughs> Hope you can join us tomorrow night at 6 p.m. We have several events scheduled for Holy Week. You will find a card in your seat listing the events, dates, and times to help you remember the schedule for the week. On Monday, Thursday, April 1st, we will have a virtual study in reading about the Last Supper, focusing on the mystery of who was the man with the water jar. On Good Friday, April 2nd, the church sanctuary will be open for a time of meditation and prayer for three hours from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Ten people are allowed in the sanctuary each hour. Please register in advance using the link in staying connected or completing the form in your chair if you're here and placing it in the offering basket as you leave. We also hope you'll be able to join us for our virtual Good Friday worship beginning at 7 p.m. Now that's just, on, that's just virtual, it won't be here. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Easter together. Please remember to worship, uh, register for the worship service and encourage your friends and families to do so also. We need your help for decorating for Easter Sunday. Please bring a potted plant of your choice to place around the altar. You will be able to take the plant home after worship ends. Let's make this area colorful for our Easter celebration. In two weeks, on April 11th, our Sunday worship service will consist of a musical concert by Aaron Abu. Aaron is an accomplished saxophonist who will share his testimony and music with us on our beautiful grounds. A love offering will be collected to support his ministry. Please spread the word and invite your friends. Please read the Staying Connected newsletter or visit the church website to obtain the virtual links for programs and for more information about upcoming events. Now here are our safety protocols for today's service. Together, we are confident we can keep each other safe because we love and respect each other. But here is what we need from you. Chairs have been spaced to meet our protocols, so please don't move them. Wear a mask at all times covering your nose and mouth. Stay a minimum of six feet apart at all times. Sorry, but this means no hugging, shaking hands, or kissing. Darn. 
We will be exiting by rows, so please wait for instructions. A communion cup has been placed on your chair. As you leave today, please place your communion cups in, in the designated area. As a reminder for all of our in-person events, if you, are, if you are not feeling well, have symptoms of COVID, or have tested positive for COVID, please do not enter the church building or attend outdoor events until you have quarantined for 14 days or tested negative. Now, let's take a minute to greet each other safely. Please stand if you are able and place your arms across your, your chest. Now gently extend your arms outward to represent your love to each other. Now, let us prepare our hearts as we worship together. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. near Bet Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks anything to you, says anything to you, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt on the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of Jesus and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus is coming, paved the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Jesus is coming, paved the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Hosanna. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. To the Prince of Peace, Hosanna. Downtrod, paved the way with branches. Hope for the downtrod, Hosanna. Hope for the downtrod, paved the way with branches. Hope for the downtrod, Hosanna. Hosanna. Jesus is coming, Hosanna to the Prince 
When Jesus rides into Jerusalem, the people had hopes he would heal the oppressive system they were living under. Those who shouted Hosanna and waved branches were celebrating and anticipating a new future. They had witnessed Jesus' healing ministry, heard his stories of transformation, and beheld his acts of peace, forgiveness, and compassionate power. Like beach glass that creates beautiful artistic mosaic, Jesus created a community that came from the brokenness around him. This community of parade attenders observed Jesus entering Jerusalem in humility and peace. As we head into the events of Holy Week, may we begin to see our ability to create health and wholeness in our community. Holy God, we have opened ourselves to healing, and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of action. Help us remember that as holy vessels, we are fragile, and we are susceptible to shattering, and yet also capable of transformation. Help us to believe in our power to heal and to change through peace and forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive, us, forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. Amen. Please rise. Psalm 118, 1 to 2, and 19 to 29. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you. O God, O God, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. God is sovereign and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. 
You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Give thanks to God, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. May God bless the reading of this holy word. Please rise as you are able to listen to the gospel. Our gospel is according to Matthew. And after getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a person who was paralyzed, lying on a bed. Then seeing their faith, Jesus said to the one who was paralyzed, Take heart, my child, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Humanity has authority on earth to forgive sins, Jesus then said to the one who was paralyzed, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And the one who was paralyzed stood up and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Good morning, beautiful people. So good to see you. Will you pray with me? Oh God, as we come together on this Palm Sunday, we come in praise of you and thank you for all that you do in our lives. And in this moment now, I pray that all that is heard and received by your people will bring glory only to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me just a moment, I'm fighting the wind up here, so. I have a new method, I'll maybe hold my pages down. <laughs> okay. So on this Palm Sunday, as we enter into Holy Week, we take a look back over our Holy Vessels theme. We've had a theme of health and recovery, and we've been reading the healing stories of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. 
We've read about the healing of the person with leprosy, of the centurion's servant, of the young daughter of a synagogue leader. We read about the woman who touched just the bare hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus healed the two blind men who cried out, have mercy on us. And Jesus calmed the wind and the seas for a boatload full of terrified disciples. And in these healing stories, we've heard the words of Jesus ringing in our ears. I do choose, be made clean. You are not dead, you are sleeping. Follow me and take heart. Over these past weeks, we've explored the physical, economic, intellectual, and mental health and, and environmental health. Yesterday, we read through the Gospel of, of Mark, and we read again many of these healing stories, and it just occurred to me, hearing it all in, uh, compiled all together in one sitting, how just how much Jesus' ministry involved healing, reaching out to those in great need. And as we've learned over these several weeks, Jesus came not just to heal our infirmities, but to send this message that God wants us to be holy, holy. Holy, holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy. This was the message of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem for his very last time. One thing is very clear about Palm Sunday. Jesus chooses very carefully how he is going to enter the city. His entrance was a sign and actually a culmination of his life's ministry. And his entrance had at its core the message of wholeness and peace. You see, Jesus chose to come into Jerusalem on a donkey, a quiet animal instead of a war horse. Jesus came amongst the songs of children and the humble rather than the shouts of the elite and soldiers. When Jesus came, people were waving olive and palm branches instead of swords and spears. The Center for Christian Nonviolence says that Jesus, Jesus could not have entered Jerusalem in any other way. Yes, Jesus could have acted the part of a typical king, entering in a chariot surrounded by manned war horses carrying the most advanced killing bows, their assault weapons of the day. However, this would not be the beginning of a holy week. Starting on Palm Sunday, through the brutality and the injustice of Good Friday, and on to Easter Sunday, it is the non-violent love of Jesus and his message and acts of peace that make this Holy Week. Peace. Peace. That was the message of Palm Sunday. And it is God's message to us. Peace is a key to becoming holy, holy. In today's healing gospel story, we see the importance of internal peace that Jesus places in this story. Jesus is presented with this paralyzed man and he's carried by friends on a mat. And these friends, I imagine, are your deacon types. As we celebrate and honor our deacons today, those who are caring and encouraging, and they were petitioning for someone in a great need. And Jesus sees this paralyzed man with his friends, and it seems that at the, at the first glance, Jesus knows the source of his suffering and his despair. You see, Jesus looks into the heart into his heart, Jesus looks into our hearts. And Jesus can feel that this person is paralyzed not only physically, but he is paralyzed emotionally. Clearly, it seems that the weight of this person's past sins or his failures or whatever it was, 
this that was weighing on him was part of his affliction. And so Jesus knew the words he needed to hear. Take heart. Take heart, says Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and walk. Modern science has begun to acknowledge what Jesus already knew. And there, there's often a close tie between our deep emotional hurts and our pains that are unresolved and one's physical health and body. Take heart, Jesus says to us. Bring me your pains, yes. your failures, your abuses, your past disappointments. Don't make your bed in them. Instead, offer them up in exchange for this peace of God so that we can be holy, holy. In this gospel healing story, there is another message of peace that I discovered. I can see Jesus standing there in the middle of this group, and he's in the midst of two opposing sides. There are those who are rejoicing over this healing of this paralyzed person. And then there's those on the other side and they're crying out blasphemy. And Jesus' response to this conflict was not to practice fight and not to practice flight. No, Jesus chose a third way. We see that he did that frequently throughout his life. He always chose that third way. Jesus stood his ground. And Jesus focused on that person in need and told that person to stand up, take your bed, and walk. Jesus' response to conflict, I think, is a good lesson to us because our lives are racked with conflict. It's all around us in our world, in our communities, in our personal lives. And this conflict, conflict can threaten our emotional health and even our spiritual health. Conflict can thwart our ability to feel whole and healthy. So when we are opposed by someone or we are at odds with others, let us not become distracted and distressed by that conflict. Instead, may we choose that third way. May we choose the way of peace and focus our energy on those who need our attention, those who need health and healing. Practicing peace is not just about being nonviolent. Peace is a lifestyle choice. And we have to make that decision every single day. Sojourner's organization promotes peace in many ways. And one way is they published a, what they call a civility pledge in ways that we can have goals for practicing peace. And I'll mention just a few of their pledges. Pledge one. We acknowledge that most of us have been guilty of violence in our hearts and with our tongues. We hold ourselves to a higher standard to which Christ called us. Pledge two, we pledge that when we disagree, we will do so respectfully without falsely impunging the other's motives, attacking the other's character, or questioning their faith. Pledge three, we commit to pray for those with whom we agree and disagree. It is more difficult to hate others, even adversaries and enemies, when we are praying for them, following the encouragement of Christ who prayed that they may be one. Riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, Jesus knew he was riding into conflict. Yet, like his actions throughout his healing ministry, his focus was not on that conflict, 
His focus was on those who were at the sidelines crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Our world is so in need of this Jesus-like peace. This is the second Sunday in a row that we have come here after a week of senseless violence and killing. The eight lives taken in Atlanta, mostly Asian women. And then this past week, the mass shooting in Colorado of grocery shoppers. These incidents, they tear at our hearts. They disrupt our sense of peace. And what happened in Boulder and Atlanta, we know are not isolated incidents. One MCC pastor wrote this this week, quote, we ask for a change in policy and a change in our hearts that we will no longer see guns as an extension of our identity. We know that gun violence, assault weapons are so contrary to the life and the message of Jesus Christ. And so we pray. We pray for the leaders of our communities, the leaders of our nation, that they will have the heart, that they will have the will to uh, adopt and uphold policies that promote peace, policies that promote well-being and health in our midst. I find it interesting that in the Middle East, even today, it is still a tradition to wave tree branches. One journalist witnessed this when he was covering the conflict in Syria and the humanitarian crisis there. And he wrote about approaching a road with his vehicle and the road was totally blocked. He couldn't even uh, pass it because there were women out blocking the road and they were waving olive branches because they're men, they're young men, their husbands, their wives, I mean, their husbands, their sons, their brothers had been taken, possibly even killed. And so those women stood in protest, waving those branches and shouting, bring us our young men of Beta. Every day, every day our world, people in our world are out there seeking peace praying for peace. And so may we be advocates and stand for peace like these women. May we be like Jesus and pledge our voices, pledge our actions to peace for both within ourselves and without. And together, may we create peace in our lives and in our communities. And by doing so, may we all be holy, holy. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust, we come before you to make our petitions known. 
Hear our cries for healing a body, mind, and spirit. We especially pray for ourselves and others who are in need of healing and hope. Sometimes we feel that no matter how hard we try, it is difficult to forgive and to bring peace and justice to our world. We give thanks that when we cannot open ourselves to your healing love, there are those around us who intervene to bring us hope. Help us to believe in our power to heal and change through peace and forgiveness for ourselves and others. We are united in praying this day for our Suncoast siblings, for our family and friends, for MCC churches and members throughout the world for your grace and peace. We pray for our church, The Circle, in Milan, Italy. We are thankful for our deacons and for the gift they bring of encouragement and prayer. We also pray for those in our country who are impacted by the recent shootings and for us to per persevere in finding ways to reduce gun violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now we invite you to rise as you are able or to pray with us at home as we pray. Our Creator, who art Lord in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours, yours is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In a previous week, we poured glass pieces into a bowl to symbolize that our individual area of brokenness together creates community. Then we added water to brighten the cloudiness and prayed for God's transformation and clarity. Today, as we stir the sea glass water, think about the mosaic of people God brings into your life in a day, in a week, in a lifetime. How many people pass through your life who need healing? Invite the Spirit to show you your next steps in furthering healing and wholeness in your corner of the world. This morning I was <clears throat> in a wondering place, amazing that the gifts <coughs> that even the pandemic has brought to us, the gift of being in this beautiful place, but also um, the gift of our online ministries and sharing. I want you to know that this morning, right now, I'm preaching in New York City. Uh, I recorded the sermon outside and so they can either be joyful or jealous about how beautiful our weather is. And I gave them a view, of, we took a panoramic view of our land and um, to share with them this Palm Sunday this morning. So God bless you, MCC New York. I want us just to take a moment to say, God has been good to me. So if you would tap yourself on your shoulder or your neighbor or at home, tap yourself and say, God has been good to me. And also, Suncoast, God has been good to us. God has been good to us. We're so excited this week. We picked out our new floor. It's going to be a polished concrete. It's going to be gorgeous. 
Uh, the color and all of it is going to be reasonable in price. Uh, virtually no maintenance. Hallelujah, isn't that great? It'll hold up over decades and decades. We can dance on it. We can worship. We can, you know, move furniture, have dinners, do all that we do. We're also going to go ahead and put carpeting on the chancel and we're going to move the sound booth back so we have all of that space available for worship and for events in the church. Hallelujah. So as of our first goal was $20,000 and as of now we've received at least 18,855 because we're gonna do a few other things. We'd really like it to go to 25. And uh, if any of you need a little beyond Easter to make that happen, we'll understand completely. I always say, whenever you give it, we'll need it. Amen, hallelujah. I believe by Easter Sunday, we can reach our goal. If you brought something with you, there is a basket in the back. Uh, we're so thankful. Also continue to give your tithes and offerings for our everyday needs, we are so grateful and proud of our faithfulness together. Amen. I now invite our retiring deacons forward. Deacon David Flynn, Deacon Charlene Bazzorti, and uh, unfortunately, Deacon David Waldron is sick today and was not able to be with us, but he's also retiring. We don't want them to back uh, have a stand right behind the altar. So they can see you. <laughs> so though our deacons are retiring for, from service, active service, they are not saying goodbye to us. They uh, will remain active at Suncoast and they all say they're going to continue to serve the church because they love the church so much. Um, their service to Suncoast, I don't have to set, tell you this, but it has been exceptional. Um, yes. They are people of great faith and very big hearts, and they've shined their beautiful lights on all of us in so many ways over many years. They've prayed with us, they've encouraged us, they've visited us in the hospital, they've served as communion, They've taught classes, they've led us in worship, and they've done so much more behind the scenes that none of us even know. Over the history of Suncoast, especially during challenging times, they were the words of hope. Our deacons have supported and encouraged each of the Suncoast pastors. Reverend Vicki and I have found their insights, love, and service invaluable to us. Deacon Dave Flynn is a founding member of Suncoast and a deacon since 2001, serving for 20 years. He is a person, yes. He's a person who has often brought us deep insights and words of wisdom. He has a gift of seeing each person as unique individuals. He has made it his mission to focus on the you in each of us and giving us his full attention. Deacon Dave has a beautiful way with words and writing liturgy and prayers that have encouraged all of us. Dave, would you like to say something to this microphone? So step back, sure. Yeah. It's not on. Okay. Well, good morning, beautiful people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has been my distinct privilege over the years to work with this beautiful congregation to see all the good things that we have done. I wouldn't do anything different. It's my heart is full of gratitude for this beautiful place, for this wonderful congregation that has been through thick and thin, <laughs> but mostly through thin. We've <laughs> conquered it all. <laughs> so it is with gratitude and love that I am very grateful for the, any part that I may have had to work with all of you in this beautiful place. Thank you. The tallest one is what? That that one right there you have. This is yours. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Thank you from all of us. Deacon Charlene Bazzorti, 
has been a deacon since 2005, serving for 14 years. Yes. It's 16. 16. 16. Oh, 16 years. Ed Wright. Sorry, I wasn't adding correctly. Sorry. I remember every year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Char says that serving this church has been her heart. And she certainly has given her heart to us. Char especially has the gift of encouraging and listening. And she seems to know most when people are really struggling. And she has been able to seek those people out and nurture them and minister to them. And in doing so, she's been very kind and very patient. Char has a love of sharing communion and she's been the one who's been taught us and trained many of you as communion servers. And that's been a very special gift that she has given to us. And Char is a woman of many, many talents. She even has helped us with technology and with our media services and done so much else behind the scenes. And uh, we thank her so much from the bottom of our hearts and celebrate your ministry today. Thank you. Please find me. Thank you very much. Um, as Reverend Vicki said, you are my heart. Thank you for letting me serve you it has been a blessing, and it has been an honor. Thank you. The, the blue one. Yeah. And now, even though he's not here, we honor and remember David Waldron. And if he gets when he gets here some Sunday, we'll. We'll thank him in person. Mm -hmm. He has served since 2014, and prior to that, served many years on the board of directors. David is the one who reminds us of God's promise and the importance of standing firm on the church's foundational scriptures. He has a gift of being in tune with the Holy Spirit and has helped us keep alive our vision. His ability to do that has brought us much encouragement and has helped us stay spiritually grounded. So to all of you, we are honored today to recognize and thank you for your service and announce that you will join with Sharon Sylvester and be entitled from now on as Deacon Emeritus at Suncoast MCC. We look forward to continuing to serve in ministry with you and we look forward to God's continued work and ministry in your lives. Amen. Amen. Please rise. So why don't you two, can you two sit here, please? Because yeah. you have communion, and we'll right. see. Right. We'll just sit here. Sit here. Well, he has to get his book. Oh, I'll get it, David. She'll get it. He's going to get it. No way. Go ahead, David. <laughs> heaven you were there with me we walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea we heard the angels singing then someone called your name you turned and saw this young man he was smiling as he came said, friend, you may not know me now, then again, but wait, you used to teach me Sunday school when I was only eight, and every week you would say a prayer before the class would start, and one day when you said that prayer, I said, Jesus, in my heart.
said, remember the time a missionary came to the church. His pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave. That's why I'm here today. Watching online, are we on again? Yes. If you're no, wait, watching wait. on, I think we're singing first. Yeah. He's singing first. at your chair. There are two seals, one for the bread and one for the juice. Un un unseal the top seal where the bread is and wait until instructed for to consume together. <clears throat> we come together as God's holy vessels, fired in the kiln of love. God reminds us again and again that we are held together in the Spirit's presence and made whole by grace. Therefore, we come to this table giving God thanks and praise. Holy are you, and blessed is Jesus the Christ, holy vessel of divine presence on earth, 
Your spirit anointed Jesus as a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. At the time of ascension, Jesus promised to be with us always. In the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are not alone. The night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he created a new tradition from a sacred meal. After lifting the bread and giving thanks, he broke it open and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take this, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks to you, passed it to his disciples. Jesus said, Drink from this, all of you. This is all of whom I am. My life poured out for you. Each time you drink of it, remember me. <clears throat> And so in remembrance of Jesus, who gave himself as a healing holy vessel, we bring our whole selves in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. As you fill the vessels of this table with your presence, also fill every vessel in our seats and at home so that we may be your holy vessels in this world, made complete and whole to serve you. One of the things that drew me to MCC was that MCC believes in an open table. This means that any and all of us can receive these gifts. Whether you're participating from home or gathered here, please now consume the bread and juice as together we receive the bread of life. Holy Creator, in this meal we have heard the words of Jesus ring in our ears. Take heart, my child, stand up and walk. May the Spirit of Christ make us whole and holy to serve as healing agents in a broken world. Amen.
A reminder that our volunteers will help you to exit row by row for safety. And now go with confidence as treasures of God. And may the spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring to your step. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.